a, a great uh, teacher at that time. I wonder if, how many of you know the name David Small. He's a great uh, children's book illustrator and author. And um, he was teaching uh, art in Kalamazoo College at that time. He was just about to stop teaching. He was just about to go full-time into illustration. And I was one of those lucky last students who got to have David Small as a teacher uh, just before he uh, moved on uh, to do what was really his calling uh, to be a great illustrator. But he was a, a big influence on me. In fact, I would say he was my life's great artistic mentor, great teacher, gave me a lot of advice about drawing, and um, really became just a good friend over time. Uh, and I do feel very lucky. I hope that you all get a chance to have a teacher like that, what we call a mentor, someone who really takes a special interest in you uh, and guides you uh, towards expanding your talents and working harder and getting better at the things that you want to do. Well, I think I'm done with my little drawing here of uh, Chibi Talia, and I'm going to flip this page over, and if you have a piece of paper there on the table, uh, I would invite you now to start joining along with me and uh, trying to follow what I do step by step, line by line, I'm going to be teaching you how to draw one of these chibi characters. Uh, maybe first I should spell the word chibi for you. I keep saying the word chibi. I don't know if everyone knows how it's spelled. C-H-I-B-I. That's the word for this cartooning style that we're going to be doing here today. Now chibi characters very often have very strong emotions on their faces. So if they're surprised, their faces are like, oh, I'm so surprised, right? Uh, or if they're happy, they're like, woohoo, I'm so happy, you know? This time I'm going to show you how to draw an angry chi chibi character. And so the anger that you see is going to be extra, extra angry, very exaggerated. So consider this a lesson on chibi anger. And I'm using pieces of chalk here. But uh, just think of this as like your pencil. I'm not going to be doing anything very fancy with it, just drawing lines. And I'm going to begin by drawing a very light circle right here in the top area of my page. Notice I'm not going to make it too dark. I'm also not going to make it too big. Keep it kind of light. You know, drawing a perfect circle is very hard, but the good news is I don't expect a perfect circle. Just do your best. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, this is going to be the head of this angry chibi character. Now, when someone gets angry, especially when we draw a cartoon version of an angry person, very often the eyebrows are pointing down. Have you ever seen that toward the middle of the face? So that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to make two diagonal lines pointing down. Those are going to be the angry eyebrows. I like to start with chibi characters because it's pretty simple. The way we draw them, they keep it simple. You don't have to work too hard. Now, one thing that uh, artists in Japan will do to these angry eyebrows is they'll add just a little zigzag to one or even to both of them. That little zigzag is actually pretty important. It's supposed to be the wrinkles between the eyebrows when someone gets angry, you get those little wrinkles, especially older people get those wrinkles. Uh, so that, that little zigzag helps us feel a little more anger coming from those eyebrows. And now it's time to draw the eyes, but we're not actually gonna draw the eyes, we're gonna kinda draw lines around the edges of the eyes. And uh, the nice thing about this, it doesn't have to be perfect and smooth. You don't have to make perfect smooth lines. In fact, it's better if they're not perfect and smooth. Watch what I do here. I'm going to make a kind of a wobbly line here for uh, around his eye. And then I'm going to go back on top of that. And every time I go on top of it, I'm going to add to it a little more. It's not perfect. It's not smooth. It's kind of wobbly and warbly. And that is going to create what I call a great big white-hot fireball of rage. 
He's so angry, his eyes have sort of exploded in the balls of fire. And notice that you can't see the whole circle of the eye. It's kind of tucked up underneath that eyebrow. That also adds to this feeling of rage. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw the other eye. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. Doesn't even need to be exactly the same size. Just uh, have fun with it. But you, I do think going back over, over it a few times helps to make it feel more glowing and fiery. Now, um, have you ever tried to draw a nose, a human nose? Is it hard to draw the human nose? I think it is. It's very hard to draw the human nose. But the good thing, the good news for you, when we draw chibi style, there's no nose at all. Woohoo! Just skip the nose and we're going to move on down to drawing the mouth. But before I draw the mouth, I want to draw the rest of his head, this character. It's going to come down and it's kind of following that circle, except I'm going to have it come down to just a little bit of a point in the middle for his chin. It's not a pointy point. It's just a uh, slightly pointy point. So like I said, we're going to skip the nose. And I'm going to move straight on to drawing the mouth. I'm going to start with a line right down here. It starts right down here. It starts to head up towards that first eye. And then I'm going to stop. Just draw that first line heading towards the eye. Then I make it stop. And then I'm going to go straight across. Straight across like that. Maybe just a little bit of a bend to that line if you want to. Then I'm going to have that line kind of cut back on itself and then drop down like so. And this becomes the big wide open mouth of this angry character who's yelling at us at the top of his lungs. You kids! Get away from my car! <laughs> He's so angry. Uh, and now I'm going to draw a, a circle in the back and going to be the tongue this guy with his wide open mouth, we can sort of see his tongue back there. Now I always like to add a little bit of shading uh, when I draw the mouth. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to just draw some back and forth lines here to just make it a little darker inside the mouth. And you can shade. There's so many different ways of shading. You can shade any way you like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of add more lines at the top and make it darker near the top until finally we get a deep, deep shadow back there for the top of his mouth. And this makes it look a little more like it's wide open and the, it's like the mouth of a cave almost. But if you leave the tongue completely white like this, then it starts to look like an egg. Like he's got a big egg in the back of his mouth, and I think that looks a little weird. So I'm also going to add some shading to the tongue, but I'm not going to make it as dark as the rest of his mouth. I'm going to make it a little lighter. All right. Well, the next thing we have to do to, is to draw the ears. And happily, the ears, in real life, drawing ears is pretty hard. There's a lot of complicated lines inside the ears. But we're not going to draw all those lines. I'm going to just draw, it's almost like the letter C for one of the ears, and then just reverse it for the other ear. You don't have to do too much fancy with the ears in a chibi drawing. It's really more about the eyes and the mouth, I think. Now, I wonder if some of you may have seen that what I'm about to draw. This is a Japanese uh, symbol of anger that you sometimes see in Japanese cartoons. And it's made up of three or four different lines that kind of curve together. Have, have, it, have any of you seen this before? Sometimes you'll see it on Japanese cartoons. It almost, 
it looks like a sparkle or something, and you're like, what is that? But it's actually a symbol of anger. It shows that someone is angry. And the, the meaning of it, it's a little hard to believe, but it's supposed, it goes back to this idea of a bulging vein on the side of someone's head when they get angry. Uh, just sort of, especially an older person, you might see this bulging vein on the side of their forehead. You kids! Uh, and so they've started to do this as like a symbol now. Uh, to me, it's like a neon sign that just says, angry, 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 this guy is angry. And it's like shorthand uh, that the Japanese cartoonists will use. And now it's time to move on to drawing the hair. Now, uh, you could try to follow along with what I'm doing if you want to. Uh, but if, feel free to do your own hairstyle. I'm going to give this character sort of spiky hair. For me, that means a bunch of sort of V-shaped lines here, spikes of hair. And I'm just going to keep going, having them go in slightly different directions, slightly different sizes all the way around. But again, feel free to do any kind of hairstyle you like. You can change it up. You don't have to copy exactly what I do. But one thing that I like to do when I'm drawing a chibi character, if I draw hair in the area of the forehead, I try to lighten up my lines and I try very hard to not have the hair get in the way of his eyes. So you can see me trying to avoid drawing too much hair in that area. I want people to continue to see the eyes and to pay more attention to the eyes than they do to the rest of the hair. So what do you think? Is that character starting to look angry now? And now it's time to draw the body. Now, like I said, with a chibi character, the head is very big and the body is very small. And happily, that means that we are going to simplify the body quite a lot. In fact, the upper body is just going to look like a little square. And it's barely, his shoulders are barely even as wide as his mouth, which is a little hard to understand if you think about it too much. But maybe better, best not to think about that. And I'm going to draw his arms now. And the pose that I'm using, you'll see this in angry chibi characters sometimes. He's going to be clenching his fists and flapping his arms up and down to express his rage. So watch how I do this. I'm going to draw one line. This is supposed to be one of his arms. And then a second line. They're always coming from the shoulder area. Third, fourth, I think I'll go for five lines. Now. This doesn't mean that he has five arms. It means he's got one arm, but it's flapping up and down. It's kind of like a motion blur. And so I'm going to draw one line at the end, a curving line that sort of connects them all. This will help us see this as a single arm flapping up and down. And you know, when you draw clenched fists, that also is a very hard thing to draw. Lots of lines in there, very complicated, but not in the chibi world, in the chibi world, a clenched fist is as simple as like drawing a snowball or something. It just, it's just like a little circle. But watch how I do this. I'm going to overlap circles in this part of the drawing, one on top of the other. And this will add to that feeling of the motion blur, like his fist is flying up and down. I ended up with five different circles. If you only have four or if you have six, it's not a problem. Just uh, go with what feels natural. But you might want to add uh, a couple of more motion lines that add to this feeling of the arm moving. I'm going to add one here, maybe another one over there. And that finishes, for me, his arm flapping up and down. 
Of course, it's not good if he only has one arm flapping up and down. So, sadly, that means we need to come over here and draw another arm doing the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So, Now, I know it's hard to draw the same thing twice and have it look exactly the same, but don't worry, it doesn't have to look exactly the same. We're just having fun here. We don't need it to be perfect in every way. But it may help you to go in the same order you did last time. You draw the arms, you draw the curving line that joins them. Then draw, draw those snowball fists overlapping. <laughs> and then finally I'm going to add those motion lines like I did before. I'll give you, I'm, I'm going to have a quick look to see if everyone is, has caught up. I don't want to go too fast because I know it can take, sometimes take people a little more time. Oh, I'm seeing beautiful work here today. You guys know what it means to be angry. It's coming out in your drawings, I think. All right, so we got the arms and uh, now we're going to draw the legs. And I'm going to show you how to draw the legs with just one shape, really. It's kind of like a uh, horseshoe shape, or like half of a donut or something. <laughs> and that way I draw both of his legs at the same time, just one simple shape. And once I've got that in place, we can draw the feet which, uh, interestingly, are almost the same size and shape as his ears. And at this stage, we're almost done with this drawing, but I'm going to show you a couple of other things we can do to add to it. Um, I like the idea of him being uh, hopping mad, like he's actually jumping up off the ground. So I'm going to add what we call a drop shadow down here. A little bit of a shadow underneath, and suddenly it looks like he is airborne with rage, flying up into the, into the air. And then another thing we can do is to have uh, sweat drops shooting off of his head. He's worked himself up into a lather. angry man. And there you go. That's pretty much all you need to do a drawing of an angry chibi character. Now, if you want to, uh, you can take that home with you and add color to it, add more shading to it, give your character a name, maybe even write a story about the angry chibi dude. And, uh, but for now, I'm going to move on to the next uh, sheet of paper so we can do a different lesson. Now, how did you feel about that one? Was it really hard for you, or was it just about right? Too easy? Did anyone think it was too easy? I don't see any, I don't see any, too hard? It was rough. It was rough. Well, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it simple then. I don't want... I don't want anything in this lesson to get too hard. Um, I'm going to show you how to draw a uh, cartoony um, kitten, just for fun. Just in case we have any animal lovers here in the audience. And again, I'm going to be using a piece of chalk here, but it, it really just symbolizes your pencil. So uh, let's try to draw a cute little kitten here. I'm going to begin again with a sort of a circle shape, except it's maybe a little boxy. It's like a boxy circle, a little taller maybe than it is wide. This is going to be my uh, kitten. 
That's going to be the head of the kitten. Now notice again, it's high on the page and there's space down here beneath it. This is where we're going to draw the kitten's body. So I'm leaving space down underneath it. And uh, one way of making, one, one way of showing the difference between a cat and a kitten, if you want it to look like a kitten, there's a couple of different things you can do. One is to make the ears really big. If you make the ears big, it's going to look more like a kitten than a cat. So watch how I do this. I'm going to make a quite large, slightly curvy triangle shape. Notice it's pointing diagonally. This is one of the ears. It's pointing, it's not pointing straight up like Batman ears. It's pointing diagonally off to the side. Of course, that means we need to draw the other ear and just do your best to have it be about the same size and the same shape. Doesn't need to be perfect, just do your best. That's going to be uh, the shape of the ears. Now I'm going to add uh, just two more lines to show that these ears have sort of two surfaces. They have an upper surface, or like a back surface, and then they have the interior of the ear. If you add one extra line here, this becomes the sort of top and the back side of the ear. And we can sort of see, see the structure of the ear that way. Now I never noticed until I started looking at uh, photos of cats and kittens. They actually have quite a lot of fur on the insides of their ears. Did you ever notice that? So I'm going to draw a sort of a zigzaggy line right there to indicate fur on the inside of the kitten's ears. Now I told you uh, that there were two tricks for making a, it look like a kitten rather than a cat. And the first trick was to make the ears really big. The second trick is to make the eyes very low on the head. If we put the eyes way up here, it's not going to look like a kitten. I'm going to pull the eyes way down low. I'm going to make them super simple circle shapes. A little bit widely spaced. Notice the eyes are not super close together. But they're low down on the face. They're, not, they're closer to the bottom than they are to the top. And uh, for those of you who want to try something a little bit challenging, I'm going to show you a trick for making the eyes look cute and shiny. Oh, do you know this one? It's what we call a um, highlight. I'm going to make a little circle inside the circle. I'm going to make both of them on the same side, in the same location. So to me, that's the upper left. I'm drawing a little circle inside the circle. And then everything outside of that little circle is going to get darkened in. Now for me this means red, but for you guys it means kind of the dark gray of your pencil. But hopefully you can see the effect that this creates. It looks like a shiny eye, doesn't it? And there's something just kind of cute about those little black shiny looking eyes makes the kitten look quite innocent, I think. And that's basically it for the eyes. Uh, for the nose, I'm going to do just a tiny little triangle. Notice the location. I'm going to put it right here near the eyes, just a little bit low, but keeping it quite small. Again, that's another trick for showing that it's a kitten, not a cat. make the nose relatively small. And for the mouth, you know kittens and cats' mouths don't look like human mouths. They have, they're sort of split in the middle. So what I'm going to do is imagine a number three, like you took the number three and you have it lying down on its back. And this is how I'm going to draw the mouth. 
To me, it looks a little like a number three. And that's my kitten mouth. And what some, I've seen some cartoonists do is to give the kitten sort of little puffy cheeks. So this is something you can do if you want to. You sort of change that shape a little and give these cute little puffy cheeks down here. Just sort of increases the cuteness factor a little, I think. Of course, uh, kittens have whiskers, right? So now's your chance to add some whiskers. I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm not going to make them too long. I'm going to just stick with three whiskers on either side. One, two, three. It's very tempting to overdo it with whiskers, and you keep adding more and more, and before you know it, it looks weird. So I'm going to keep it simple, just have three. Now I think this, uh, this kitten belongs to somebody, so I'm going to give her a little collar. And that's really just two curving lines here. This is going to be the collar, but I thought it would be cute if the kitten has like a little bell on the collar. So when it goes running around the house, you hear that little bell tinkling. And so I'm going to add a circle here. It's actually a fairly large circle. This is going to be the bell, but I, it doesn't look like a bell yet, does it? I'm going to show you how to change this into a, a drawing of a bell. I'm going to add two lines right in the middle. And then I'm going to draw a dot right here. And then connecting that dot to the bottom of the circle is just a short line. And uh, yeah, it sort of looks like a, a little jingle bell kind of a bell, doesn't it? And now we're ready to move on to drawing the body. I'm going to draw a pose where the kit, kitten is sort of sitting with its hind legs tucked underneath it and its paws in front. Uh, and so for me, I want to begin by drawing the upper body. This is kind of a simple circular shape. It may look weird right now, but that's because we haven't added the legs yet. And um, to draw the front legs, I'm going to just start by making a simple straight line that comes down like so. And once you've got that line in place, I'm going to draw two more lines, one on each side. So you end up with three lines. And those are going to end up being our two front legs. The way to make them look like legs is to draw paws at the bottom, just sort of slightly oval shaped curving lines down here. Those are the front paws. And maybe some of you have tried this before to make it look like animal paws, just add like two little short lines. See how that works? You add those two lines and suddenly they look like paws. Now the nice thing about a cat that's just sort of sitting there with the legs tucked underneath is you don't see those back legs so much. It makes it a little easier to draw the rest of the body. I'm going to just make a curving line that comes way down like that. And then we maybe just see a little bit of those back paws back there, just a little tiny hint of the back paw. 
and I'm going to do the same thing over here. And we are nearly done, except I feel like I've forgotten something. Anybody have any idea? That's it. You guys helped me remember the tail. Um, now, a kitten's tail should not be super duper long, so I'm going to keep it a, a little bit on the short side. Again, doing everything I can to show that this is not a full grown cat. I'm going to make like a, an S shape. Now, doing that line is the easy part. The hard part is drawing the next line because it has to follow along with it. So I'm going to come back here, and this time I'm going to go slowly, try to keep it the same width, right? I'm paying attention to how wide this tail is going to be, I'm trying my best to keep it the same width. It's tricky. It's very easy to draw the first line. It's harder to draw the second line. And that is our kitty cat. Now, when you guys go home today, if you want to add to this drawing, there are places where you could add shading. I'll show you real quickly. If I was going to add shading to this, I'd put some inside the ears. Now, this is a little bit of a cheat because I'm using chalk. It's much easier for me to shade with chalk than it is with a pencil, at least to create these big areas of shade. But if you want to add to your drawing after you go home, I'd say one in the ears, maybe color in this area of the uh, collar, and then maybe get a little shading over here on one side of the body. That'll sort of add to the drawing and finish it off for you. So there you go. There's our little lesson on drawing a kitty cat. And I think we have time for at least, um, hopefully, two more lessons. I think we could do two fast lessons. And what I like to do, I like to get the suggestions of the people in the room so that this drawing class is different from any other drawing class that you ever went to because I'm going to base these next two lessons on your suggestions. So if you have any uh, idea for something that you would like to learn how to draw, something that maybe you have trouble with drawing, um, go ahead and raise your hand and give me a suggestion and I'll try to come up with a lesson on the spot based on your suggestion. So what's your idea? What's that? Dog. A dog. We could do a dog lesson. I like the idea of that. Let's get some other lessons and we'll see which one we end up doing. Yeah, what's your idea? A dolphin. A dolphin. Oh, we got, we're going to go through all the animals today. Yeah? A Kiko. A Kiko. Oh my goodness, you know my Akiko character. That, yeah, that could be fun. <laughs> go, yeah, we could go back to the old Akiko days. I don't know if everybody knows. Actually, I'll just grab and show if you don't mind. Um, Akiko is one of my characters from my first published books that came out around the year 2000 through to around 2004, 2005, something like that, the Akiko books. Let's see, were there any other suggestions that anybody had any ideas? Did you have one? A person, like, um, more realistic, or do you still like the cartoony style? Not so angry looking? Yeah, we could do, yeah, that's a good idea. We could do a character who's not so angry looking. Well, maybe we can uh, combine two of those ideas, because uh, Akiko is uh, a kind of a character, and she doesn't usually look angry, so maybe I will... Uh, do a drawing of how to draw a Kiko. This will take me back to my old days when I first got started as a published comic book creator. 
And uh, boy, this will be our third lesson that begins with a circle, but that's just the way it goes, guys. This is, this is the day of uh, circles. I'll go ahead and spell the name Akiko here for you. It's a Japanese name. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw very much uh, beginning the same way we did before, sort of a circle that's a little bit high on the page. This is interesting for me because I, I really haven't uh, done an Akiko drawing lesson in quite a while, so this is kind of fun. So uh, Akiko's eyes are very easy to draw. They really are just little oval shapes, pretty much right in the middle of the face. A little bit close together though. You gotta leave space on the sides for the hair. And uh, just below the eyes, once you've got them in place, I'm going to do the, her nose, which is just kind of a, a curving line. It's, again, a little bit like a letter C. I'm going to try to clean up the bottom of the head here just a little bit. And Akiko is almost always super happy and smiley, so I'm going to give her a nice big smile. If you can get that shape in there. And we can usually see her teeth, so I'm going to make one line that goes right across here, kind of divides it in two except the top part is going to stay white, that becomes the teeth, and then the bottom part gets a little bit shaded in. And so it looks like she's kind of got her mouth open a little bit and we see her teeth. Now one funny thing about Akiko, the way I always drew her ears is I kind of pushed them down on her head and made them much lower than they are in, in uh, normal real life. So her ears are very low on her head, way down toward the bottom of her head, which is really quite unusual. In real life, people's ears are much closer to where their eyes are. So I was exaggerating uh, with my cartooning style. Then. Well, it's time to do Akiko's hair. So I'm gonna make two curving lines coming up from the ears on both sides of the head. And then across the middle, this might be a little tricky for some of you, she's got bangs. And I would always just draw a bunch of lines there, up and down vertical lines all the way across her forehead for her hair. And I might connect them at the top with just one line that goes across. Actually, Akiko's hair is a little bit challenging. So the, this might be one of the more challenging things we do here today. Because her hair, on, uh, her hair kind of splits across on the side, and you end up with a bunch of diagonal lines that are coming across here. on the one side. And then of course, you gotta do that again over here to complete the rest of the drawing. And then I would always just sort of draw a bunch of lines up here, almost like zigzaggy lines to kind of fill in that area. I'm going to take a little break and make sure everyone has a chance to catch up because I feel like I was going a little fast with some of that stuff. Yeah, Kiko's hair can be challenging. Nicely done. Oh, beautiful work. We have a real Akiko fan here, I can tell. Are you able to see? Oh, okay, great. 
All right, well, those of you who know the Akiko books, you know that the big thing with her is that she has these pigtails. So we got to get in a pigtail, and I have it start kind of almost at eye level, kind of pointing down diagonally, and then just a little bit of a curving line. That's how I would draw her pigtails. Her pigtails are a little uh, unnatural looking. I don't know what they're made of. It's supposed to be hair, but it, it, it looks like they're made of plastic or something. I don't know. She has, she has, very, coarse <laughs> she has very coarse hair. <sighs> and then again, sort of making it match with the rest of her hair, I would always add just these curving lines. Usually not going all the way across, maybe two-thirds or three-quarters of the way across, leaving a little bit of blank space there. I guess more at the top is where I would leave the blank space. And there you go, Akiko. But I guess we could go ahead and draw her neck. She has quite a small neck. Very cartoony. And I guess I'll do the collar of her shirt. And maybe just the beginning of uh, her shoulders. Now again, after you go home, if you want to keep working on this, you could add a little more shading to the hair. I'm smearing it all together with my finger just to create like extra tone in this area. And one thing that I'm going to do with my finger just now is to give uh, like little apple cheeks, these, uh, I call them blushies. Right there, kind of gives her that cute youthful appearance. And to be honest, when I drew Akiko's ears, I would normally have at least one extra line in here to, to begin to convey the structure of the ear. So I'm going to add just that one extra line. Hi there. And that is going to bring this uh, Akiko part of the lesson to a close. And Happily, as I said, it does look like we have time for one final lesson. What did you do with the ears again? Oh, I just added um, just one little extra line in there. Yeah. So, yeah, we have time to do um, one more lesson. Now, I know we had a request for a dog, a dolphin. I wonder if anyone else came up with any other suggestions. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, did you have an idea? A boat. A boat. Hey, that could be fun, a boat. Any other ideas? Well, I like this idea of drawing a boat. Oh, you, what was that? You'd like a boat too? Okay, great. Well, that helps me. Let's go ahead and do a drawing of a boat. That'll be different because we did a, a cat. We did a couple of people. Drawing a boat could be different and interesting. Oh yeah, I hope everyone's got enough paper and pencils. Oh yeah, did you have a request? Uh huh. You can draw some friends with a Kiko, absolutely. Oh yeah, you can always come up with your own friends. That's being creative. That's what it's all about. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead then and try to do a lesson on drawing a boat. Now, I'm not a big expert on drawing a boat, but I do have one or two tricks that I use whenever I have to draw a boat from memory. And one of them is to start with, it almost looks like a figure eight. And uh, it's, not, it's not like an eight that's going up like this. It's like a figure eight on its side. So watch what I do here. And I'm going to keep this light. I'm going to do like a very narrow figure eight. 
Okay, now that looks kind of weird, but this figure eight is going to help me for drawing the shape of a boat, believe it or not. Because this back here, this is going to be the back part of the boat. Now watch as I darken, I'm going to darken this line in and kind of let that other part of the line disappear a little bit. And then this becomes the front of the boat, and then this becomes the back of the boat. So I'm going to, I'm going to draw a curving line like this to be the front of the boat. And then what we're doing here is what we call a three-quarter point of view. We're not seeing the boat coming straight at us. We're not seeing it completely from the side. We're seeing it a little bit at an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one line right here, and this becomes kind of the front. Is that the bow? I've got to know my nautical terms. Starboard. <laughs> Avast. Anyone know? I'm just throwing out words now. I have no idea what they mean. Ahoy! Anyway, this is going to be the front of the boat. Now, to, to help, sort of help me figure out the structure of the boat, I'm going to start trying to follow along with this line. See if you can do at least one, and that becomes sort of like the structure of the boat. It helps you to see it. And uh, I'm not too sure about the back part of the boat, but I'm going to make it a little smaller than the front part, my feeling is from this point of view. And so over here, uh, if, I, if, if the bow is the right word, this very point of the boat is kind of cutting through the water, right? So I'm going to make a suggestion of water being kind of pushed aside. by the front part of the boat. On one side, being pushed over to the left, and then over here, it's being pushed over to the right. And you could do maybe a few more like that, because the whole boat is sort of cutting through the water, right? But I'm pretty sure most of you uh, have had the experience of drawing uh, water by drawing these sort of uh, curving waves like this. Have you, ever, have you ever done that for drawing water? Yeah. It is a good sort of cartoonist shorthand for drawing water. So I'm going to draw a few of those down here to give us the surface of the water as the boat sails through it. Now, um, now that I've gotten this far into my drawing of the boat, I have to kind of decide what it is that's powering this boat. It's a little too late, I think, to have it be a rowboat. So I'm going to have to put some suggestion of a motor back here. And I, I have to admit, I really do not have a whole lot of experience of drawing a motor, an actual motor for a boat. So I'm going to kind of guess that a rectangular shape of some kind uh, will convey that. It's got to be attached to the boat somehow, so I'm putting some sort of attachment underneath it. Those of you who regularly go sailing are probably looking at this and saying, oh, you landlubber, you don't know what a motor boat's motor looks like, clearly. Close enough, yeah, we're, this is cartooning, cartooning, we can sort of play around. Of course, that would suggest, though, that there's some, you know, there's sort of a propeller uh, mechanism back there that should be throwing a bunch of water up there from behind, right? So I'm going to add, in fact, I'm going to do like a little drop uh, mark there of water shooting up as the boat shoots along.
And if you want to add just a little more structure to this boat, again, I would say just continue following along with that first line. And then you begin to see like almost curved pieces of wood, you know, that are holding this boat together. As an artist, very often I'm adding lines to, to convey the surface, the structure of the boat. In fact, one thing you can do that would make a pretty big difference is to add a little bit of shading over here once we get past the very front of the boat. Shading is a great way of making something look more 3D. And as long as you know all the light is coming from this side, then all the shadows are coming over on this side. Now, I don't know if we want this to be like a ghost boat that's going all by itself with no one controlling it. That seems a little weird. So maybe it's time for me to draw some sort of a character in here. Um... Yeah, sure, you could draw the guy that's from the Akiko books. My feeling is that when you have a motorboat, you guys who know more about sailing, you can tell me if I'm right about this, wouldn't the person who is uh, in the boat need to be sitting back near the motor? Is that where there's like the rudder and he can control the direction back there? So that I'm going to have him... I'm going to draw two lines here that sort of will eventually look like his knees. And then I'm going to draw a kind of simple, slightly curved rectangular shape. Now this is his whole torso, his chest. Can you add yeah, oh sure, you could add an extra person. And just so that we understand what I'm drawing here, I'm going to go ahead and make a circle here for his head. We're getting kind of cartoony. His head is pretty big for his body, but, you know, this is kind of a fun cartoony style we're doing here. And I feel like he should be looking forward, right? He may be sort of controlling the boat, but he's got to be looking where he's going. So... I'm going to make his eyes on this side. Maybe give a little bit of a squint as the wind is blowing in to his eyes. I'm going to give him a pointy nose for some reason. I don't know why I just decided to do that. And yeah, how about a happy smile? This guy, he loves to be out on his boat. Oh yeah, couldn't be happier. And i got to give him one of those classic captain hats, right? I mean, that's how you know someone is a real boater. He's got to have one of those. And the, I feel like the visor part is always black, right? And then you got to get the shape. To me, I hope I'm not going too fast here. The back part is kind of small, and then the front part is bigger. Excellent. Nice work. And so, yeah, without completely understanding what it is that I'm doing or how this works, I'm going to just have his arm coming off of his shoulder and then coming down here, and presumably he's able to control something with his hand back here, and that controls the direction that the boat goes in. And with his other arm, his free arm, I'm just going to have him maybe holding himself steady. And the nice thing is this part of the boat gets in the way. We don't have to draw his hand. You know drawing hands is hard, so we just got lucky this time. I have this feeling that in some of these classic old drawings of sailor guys that they have stripes. Am I right about that, that they wear like a striped shirt sometimes. Some of these classic cartoon sailor guys. So I'm going to give him stripes. Got to be careful. He look, might look like he's uh, escaped from prison. 
<laughs> but I do feel like I've seen that sort of striped shirt thing for sailor guys. Oh yeah, this is the life. And uh, let's get an ear in here. At least one of his ears would be visible. Maybe a little bit of hair. Well, that was fun. Thank you for suggesting the boat idea. I don't think I've ever done a boat drawing like this in any of the lessons I've taught. That's the fun part about opening things up for the audience. You guys take control, and before you know it, I'm doing something I've never done before, which is always exciting. Well, sadly, I think that's bringing us uh, nearer to the end of our time here. I was going to, I probably should have asked earlier about the, the book sales part of it. Or do we sort of.